Folks, I am, I am excited. No, more than that, I am blessed that you are all here for our special Pope show. We're going to Pope it up. <laughs> we have been getting ready for this for months. In fact, we made a special Pope show opening. Jim, the Popening. Tour de Francis, a new Pope. I Heart NY Holy See, Humble Fest 2016. I think that's kind of cool, but now that he's here and I see how modest the Pope is being, I realize I need something a little less flashy. So let's, let's try something else here. Okay. Welcome, Frank. That's my kind of incense. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Catholicism, first of all, enjoy an eternity in limbo. Second, <laughs> I hear it's kind of meh. Second, you might be saying to yourself, what's all the fuss about? After all, isn't the Pope just an old guy in a dress who says he talks to God? There was a guy like that on my train this morning. <laughs> well, let's take a moment right now to explore what makes the Holy Father so wholly fascinating in tonight's the dope on the Pope. The Pope is the leader of the Catholic Church and the head of state for Vatican City. It is my favorite autonomous enclave within a major city, right after the Dallas airport Chili's too. <laughs> His Holiness is known by many names. Il Papa, Bishop of Rome, Vicar of Christ, Supreme Pontiff, and on World of Warcraft, Athrog the Death Hammer. <laughs> The papacy itself got its start 2,000 years ago when Jesus told his apostle, who was then called Simon, quote, Simon Barjona, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And that's how the apostle Simon became Peter the Rock Johnson. <laughs> because Peter was hired by Jesus himself. Each of his successors has a direct link to God. It's one of the many benefits of being a pope, along with comprehensive dental and infallibility, which is only when the Pope is speaking ex cathedra or from the seat of St. Peter. But if you're just hanging out casually and the Pope says the Godfather 3 is a worthy conclusion to the trilogy, <laughs> feel free to call bull. <laughs> and while this Pope seems like a pretty solid dude, the Popes of the past have been a bit of a mixed bag. There were the three popes of Avignon, the Borgias who loved their orgies, the mythical female Pope Joan, and the brief but hilarious reign of Pope Ralph. <laughs> skipping ahead, skipping ahead to the 20th century, one of the most transformative popes was Pope John the 23rd, shown here in the apple bottom vestments with the cape with the fur. <laughs> John XXIII oversaw the dramatic reforms of the Second Vatican Council, or as it's more commonly known, Vatican II, the fast and the abstinence. <laughs> John, pretty good, pretty good. John XXIII is the role model of Pope Francis, who, as we tape this, is touching down at New York's Kennedy Airport, assuming he made it through security. <laughs> the flowing robe and religious headgear are TSA bait. Of course, tomorrow is the big event, the mass at Madison Square Garden. It's going to be unforgettable when His Holiness dunks off a trampoline. <laughs> he could be, he could be the first pope ever to pull off a 360 tomahawk baptism. <laughs> but, Champagne. but, but, <laughs> His Holiness started his day in our nation's capital, where he became the first pontiff to address a joint session of Congress. On the one hand, the patriarch and lawgiver of the people of Israel. I'd like to clear something up really quickly. Catholics do not speak in tongues. <laughs> that was just his accent. And while there were things the Pope said today that both sides of the aisle approved or disapproved of, there was one moment that brought the whole Congress together. 
Let us remember the golden rule. Do unto others as you. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Do unto others, yeah! I'm sure that's the end of the saying. Moving on. <laughs> that's something Congress can live by. And after the speech, he had lunch with the homeless instead of the leaders of Congress, possibly because he wanted to eat with people who were less likely to beg him for donations. <laughs> and that. <laughs> Folks, I, I think that is so refreshing. Even though Pope Francis is a huge celebrity now, he's staying true to his humble nature. He is eschewing any glitz and glamour, not coming on the TV shows. But I want you to know, the door is always open, Your Holiness. <laughs> and should the mood strike you, I am ready for you here in the Ed Sullivan. I still have, I still have, I still have the humble, <laughs> the Pope chair. You will not find a humbler Pope chair. And if you can't make it, um, I understand you're a busy guy, but. I want you to know, I'm going to be pretty mad if I see you getting day drunk with Hoda and Kathy Lee. <laughs>